<clears throat> uh, those that don't know, that's my wife. She's awesome. She's really sweet. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It's my birthday week, so I've got to say more nice things so I can get presents. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, let me, let me uh, begin by praying for us this morning. Um, Lord, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you that we get to come together and listen to your word and just hear from you, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray this morning, uh, Lord, I pray for just clarity of thought. Uh, I pray that uh, I'm just able to speak clearly and communicate clearly and effectively, Lord. Uh, Lord, I pray uh, over us as we hear your word preached, Lord, that you uh, just chisel us and grow us in all uh, of the right ways. I pray that you uh, challenge us and, and push us in all the right ways, and ways, Lord. And I pray that you just grow us into your image, Lord. Um, Lord, we all come uh, this morning with, with different burdens and different uh, just things that are going on in our lives, Lord. Uh, Lord, but we get to come and, and just hear your word. Lord, I pray that your word this morning is encouraging to us, Lord. I thank you for this day. I thank you for this body of believers as we get to come and spend this Sunday morning together. Lord, I, pray, I, I just thank you that uh, the beautiful little piece of heaven that this looks like, Lord, it's, it's just encouraging for uh, what is to come. Lord, I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning, River Church. Uh, my name is Pastor Bill. I am uh, one of the pastors here. Pastor Randy is out uh, this morning, and he asked me, obviously he asked me to fill in, and so uh, I, I said yes, and here I am, uh, and I'm just excited to be here. Every time I get to preach, I, I get really excited uh, to do that. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's, it's challenging. It's difficult. It's all the things, um, but I'm glad I get to just serve Randy, serve the church in that way, so uh, he'll be back next week, so uh, if you are a first-time guest, you want to get a chance to meet Pastor Randy, uh, just come back next week. He will be here, uh, but again, he's not, not here um, today. So today we're going to be in uh, Matthew, uh, the book of Matthew, chapter, the end of chapter 3 and the beginning of chapter 4, and, and what we're going to be looking at is uh, the baptism of Jesus and the temptation of Jesus. And so we'll be in that in just a second. I know it sounds like it's kind of a lot to talk about, but I, I think that there's one message that kind of runs through both of those that I really want us to see today. Um, <clears throat> but before that, I, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but I am currently now working at Falk Middle School. Um, so I'm coaching and teaching uh, at the middle school level, and this week uh, we had, uh, so I'm coaching football and doing all that stuff and trying to get the kids coordinated because they don't know how to catch, and so I'm trying to get them to learn how to catch and trying to think of activities, right, I play quarterback, so I want kids to know how to catch. Anyway, um, and so I'm trying to think of games and activities that, that, that I could get the kids involved in uh, that, that, that could help encourage that their hand-eye coordination, and so... Uh, we played this game. It's, it's kind of like Ultimate Frisbee, but we did it with the tennis ball. Um, and so if you don't know Ultimate Frisbee, that's fine. But basically, it was just a bunch of throwing the ball around, getting kids catching. And, um, and so as the game was going on, I started to ref. The, I was refing the game, and one of the teams was starting to fall behind really bad. Right? And mind you, these are, there was sixth graders. And so these kids were starting to fall behind really bad. And I was like, okay, I'll be on your team, and we'll come back, and we'll win, right? And so I get on their team, and we don't come back, and we don't win. Um, I ended up, like, tweaking my calf muscle, uh, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, I'm losing to 13-year-olds. This is ridiculous. And so, uh, but it's funny, though, because I started, if, if I, I've started my, my career at Pace High School. And so I was playing, you know, every time, every now and then I'd play with the high school kids, and then they got to a point where they were starting to get better than me. So now I'm at the middle school, so hopefully the next 10 years I'll still be able to have an edge, and I hope to finish my career off at the elementary level so I can just take care of 
uh, defeat all the little kids. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> but there's something interesting in competing with the kids. I remember I went to Porter High School, and I was talking to my high school coach, and, and, and when, 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 when I was a senior, it was his first year there, and he would play with us, and he would do all those things, uh, and it was a lot of fun, you know, get to play with your coach, and and then over the years, I remember I ran into him maybe five, ten years later, and I said, hey, Coach Garza, um, you know, how have you been, this and that, or, you know, are you still playing with the kids? And he said, no, nah, Billy, I stopped playing about five years ago. I was like, what happened? Why'd you stop playing? And he said that the reason why he stopped playing is because once he uh, would play with the kids and he would miss a layup or he would do something that was really easy or make a, 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 a and, but, but he would mess up on something that's really easy, or he would make a play uh, that just looked a little awkward and a little goofy, uh, he feared that he would lose credibility. And, and so the, the, the older he got, I mean, the kids, the high school kids were still high school kids, and so the older he got, he felt that if, again, he didn't perform, he would lose credibility. The people wouldn't view him the same way. The people wouldn't look at him the same way, wouldn't respect him in the same way. And that is kind of like, in our passage today in Matthew, that's kind of like what the audience of Matthew uh, was, could be characterized as. They were a people um, who were supposed to be, so, the, the, so Matthew was written to a Jewish audience, and they were people who were supposed to be uh, the light to the world, and they were supposed to be a nation that, that was set apart to, to, to make much of all the other nations, uh, and to bring many people to know the Lord, right, and have their own land and their own kingdom and all this stuff, and, and that was supposed to be them, but, but, but in, in Matthew's time, when Matthew is writing, he is writing to a people um, who have lost that credibility, right? They, they are no longer the, the, the nation uh, of Israel. They're just scattered Jewish people living in their land, which is ruled by other people. And so <clears throat> that, that's kind of the setting of our passage today. Um, and so, so the nation of Israel, they failed and they lost credibility because of their failures. What we're going to see in our passage today, what we're going to study today is that, that Jesus is what the nation of Israel could not be. Right? Jesus is their credibility. Maybe that's some of us this morning, right? Maybe we have relied on our own strength and our own power and our, and our own will and our own might to, 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 to move forward, to, to save ourselves, to accomplish good things, to, to be a good person, to, to all those things, right? Maybe that is us, and, and deep down we know that, man, I just continue to fail. I've lost this credibility. Now, before we jump into the text, um, in, in the passage today, we're going to talk about how, how, how um, Jesus is the Son of God. But before we jump into that, uh, I, I want us to, again, just review uh, the, the, a little bit about the nation of Israel. So hearing that Jesus is the Son of God to this audience uh, would have been shocking, right? The, the Israelites were supposed to be God's uh, chosen son, right? In, in Exodus 4.22, this is when uh, the, 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 the nation of Israel just become a people, and they are in Egypt, and they are under oppression by Pharaoh, and they're about to leave, about to, to flee Egypt. <clears throat> uh, God describes the Israelites as his firstborn. He says, then say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. And I told you, let my son go so that he may worship me. Right, God just called the Israelites his firstborn son. 
As I said, they were a nation that was to be set apart. Right? They were to be different. They were to, to be set apart, but, 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 but to, 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 to spread God's fame and his popularity to the world. Their job was to bring uh, the other nations, right, to, to, ble- to be a blessing to the nations and to bring other people to know God. Other people were supposed to, other nations, surrounding nations, were supposed to look at the Israelites and say, wow, they have an amazing God. The problem is, is that didn't happen. Almost as quickly as God says, you are my son, you are my chosen people, did did problems arise? They did not represent God well. They did not be a blessing to the nations. They had lost credibility. The nation of Israel, in, in, our, in our story today, in Matthew, when, when Matthew is written, uh, the nation of Israel was, was, was in the past. It no longer existed. And it's in this setting that Jesus came to the world, and, and it is to these scattered Israelites, these Jewish people that we see in the book of Matthew that he is writing to. Today's story brings credibility to Jesus. To some, to some, and this may be you, to some, Jesus was the best news. To some, Jesus was joy to people's ears. To some, they were looking around, looking at their life, looking at their circumstances and say, you know what, I cannot save myself. I can't figure this out. We're done. I'm done. I, I need someone else. And Jesus comes on the scene. And, and to those people, Jesus was so sweet, such good news. Now to others, this was the worst news. Right? To others, they wanted to be uh, God's son. They wanted to be uh, uh, they wanted responsibility for their own salvation, for their own protection, for their own well-being in life. And this is what you see illustrated throughout the whole book of Matthew through the, uh, the Pharisees and the leaders, right? The religious leaders. They hated Jesus. Why? Because they were overly religious, relied on their own works. Before we go on this morning, maybe, uh, maybe you can relate to one of those two positions. Maybe you realize that you, you, can't, you can't get right. You can't get straight. You need someone to help you, someone to take over. Or, or maybe you, you uh, identify with the opposite where you're, you're, you're pushing Jesus away. You're saying, you know what? I don't really need Jesus. I don't really need what he has to offer. I'm good. I'm good. I got it myself. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> before I jump into the passage, I just want to talk a little bit about Matthew. Um, so if you're just joining us today, we have been studying Matthew for a, a few weeks now. Um, and we're going to continue to study Matthew through the, through the fall. So if you guys have like a, a Bible app or you're reading the Bible at home, just read Matthew and then read it again and then read it again and read it again and then read about the Old Testament. Uh, because a lot of what Matthew talks about is uh, from the Old Testament. But I love Matthew. I preached on Matthew a few uh, months ago. I love this book. It, it's, it's real complex. There's a lot of layers there. As I was studying this week, for um, this, this passage, I came across a quote by a theologian whose name is uh, Patrick Schreiner. Uh, and he said that the best way to study Matthew, to, to read Matthew, is, is, is with one eye looking back to the old story and, and the other eye looking at how 
we are to, or how those stories change, or how those stories develop. The best way to read Matthew is, is with a good understanding of the Old Testament. Because there's a lot of parallels. We're going to look at some of them this morning. But there's a lot of parallels in the book of Matthew, and we've already seen them as Randy's preached, but there's a lot of parallels in the book of Matthew that, that as you read them, you can't help but think of the nation of Israel. Now, as we write, as, as Matthew is written, again, he's writing to a Jewish audience, and so in their minds, they're familiar with all of what Matthew is referencing when he talks about uh, the Old Testament, the, the, the stories, right? The stuff that sounds somewhat familiar but a little bit different, they are, they are very familiar with those stories. With that, let's jump into our passage. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through <clears throat> chapter 4, verses 11. And it reads, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you. And do you come to me? Verse 15, Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. It's a good image uh, of the, the Trinity working here in this passage. We're not going to talk about that today, but um, it's really cool. Uh, verse 17, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with him I am well pleased. Man, I'm just going to pause there, but again, as the Jewish audience, as the Israelite descendants, they're thinking, no, we are the children of God. Who's this guy? Right? Who is this dude over here? That, that title belongs to us. And here you see God declaring that title to Jesus, his son, whom I love, with whom, with him I am well pleased. Verse 4.1 says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Again, if you just think of the Old Testament story, this is obviously referencing the nation of Israel wandering through the desert for 40 years, and they were hungry and much of their sin came uh, through how they dealt with the manna that was provided to them in their wanderings right <clears throat> he was hungry the tempter came to him and said if you are the son of god tell these stones to become bread jesus answered it is written man shall not live on bread alone but on every word that comes out or comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written. He will command his angels concerning you. And they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Verse 8, and this is the third temptation. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain. And if you read through Matthew, as you go through the story of Matthew, a lot of stuff happens, a lot of significant things happen on top of high mountains. Uh, but the devil took him up to the high mountain. He says, all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, all this 
I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended him. <clears throat> the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Uh, the first thing, and we've talked about this already, but I just want to highlight it again. The first thing that I want us to see is that Jesus is the Son of God, right? We talked about that uh, a little bit earlier, but you see that at the end of chapter 3. Uh, God says, this is my Son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. And then in this chapter, right, you have, G uh, you have Satan questioning this reality that that, that God just said. He's like, well, are you really that person? Are you, are you really the Son of God? Jesus is the Son of God. And it's, it's interesting, as you go through uh, the story, uh, through the temptations, it's, <clears throat> it, it, it's almost as if, uh, I mean, Jesus, obviously, he was hungry, he was human, he was struggling, but there was no way that he was going to sin. It, was, it seems as though it was just, just a way to, to solidify the fact that he is who he uh, claimed to be. <clears throat> Point two is Jesus was without sin. Right, the Israelites, as God's firstborn son, we've talked about this, failed at being God's son. And, and they should have known that they would not have been able to redeem themselves or make themselves better. Right? Jesus was without sin. The Israelites were not. In verse 15 uh, of Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 15, it says, Then the Lord appeared at the tent in a pillar of cloud, and the cloud stood over the entrance of the tent, and the Lord said to Moses, Moses is about to die. You're going to go rest with your ancestors. And these people, right? Uh, Moses is going to the promised land, or he's leading the people to the promised land. If you remember the story, he doesn't go into the promised land because of his sin. And right as he's about to, right as he is a, about to die, uh, <clears throat> uh, God tells him, you're going to go rest with your ancestors. And these people will soon prostitute themselves to the foreign gods of the land they are entering. They will forsake my name. I'm sorry, they will forsake me and break the covenant that I made with them. And in that day, I will become angry with them and forsake them. I will hide my face from them, and they will be destroyed. Many disasters and calamities will come upon them, and in that day they will ask, have not these disasters come on us because our God is not with us? And I will certainly hide my face in that day of all their wickedness and turning to other gods. <laughs> this is crazy. <clears throat> now write down this song. This is what God says. Now write down this song and teach it to the Israelites and have them sing it so that it may be a witness against them. When I brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, the land I promised on, uh, the land I promised on oath to their ancestors, and when they eat their fill and thrive, they will turn to other gods and worship them, rejecting me and breaking my covenant. Man, verse twenty-two it says. So Moses wrote down this song. Uh, that day and taught it to the Israelites. So just imagine that, right? You're, you're getting ready to go into the promised land. You're feeling pretty good about yourself. And God's like, no, you guys are going to mess up, right? And I, I don't want you to forget that you're going to mess up, so I'm going to write a song about it, and you're all going to sing it. Man, talk about <clears throat> building them up. But, but, but there was no hope for Israel. This is, this, is back, uh, this is back before King David. This is back before King Solomon. This is back before... Uh, the, 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 um, the northerns and southern, this is at the beginning of the nation of Israel. They were going to fail. There was no hope for 
them. They needed something else. <clears throat> they saw the, they should have seen the writing on the wall. This weekend, uh, I, I, I was talking to a football coach, and uh, they've had a pretty good, it's, it's a high school, um, and they've had a pretty good season thus far. And, you know, I was really excited about them, and uh, I was like, hey, man, so what, what do y'all's chances look, or how are, what do y'all's chances look like this weekend? And he's like, man, <laughs> we've watched film, and we're going to get killed. <laughs> and I was like, all right, um, that's pretty encouraging. Uh, and he's like, yeah, we just told the kids, go out there and try your best. But honestly, like, they, and he said, they have, have not seen talent at this level, right? We've watched game film, we've prepared for this game, there's absolutely no way we're going to win. And I was like, man, this guy's got to be exaggerating. Um, but sure enough, I, I checked the score, and they lost pretty, pretty bad. But, but they saw it. They, they, they understood that what was going to happen this weekend, and the same is true for the nation of Israel. They should have seen it. But, but the, 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 the beautiful thing about this passage is that Jesus was without sin, right? The, 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 the first son of God or, or the, the, the nation of Israel who's called the firstborn uh, son of God, <clears throat> they sinned and they fell short. But if you look at the story of Jesus, right, he... he was God's son, and he was tempted in all the same ways, yet he was without sin. Right? The blessing to the nations, the blessing to the world, was to happen through this son. Right? He became what the nation of Israel could not be. Theologians call this, uh, the, well, the, the Bible calls this, there was the, the Israel, and then there is a new Israel, right? Jesus is the new Israel. He is what Israel was supposed to be. You can go on many different things in the Bible, right? You could, you could say he is the new Adam, right? He was what Adam was supposed to be. Jesus is who we were supposed to be. And in this passage, he was uh, without sin, and he became, he is who we could not become because of <clears throat> his sinlessness. He was without sin. The next thing I want us to see in this passage is that all authority was given to Jesus. In verse 10 in our passage, Today it says, Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Jesus tells Satan to, 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 to get behind him, and Satan listens. Right? In Matthew 28 it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Right? Jesus is the king. He is the ruler. All authority has been given to him. <clears throat> so when he says something, it happens. When he tells Satan to get behind him, it happens. But with that authority comes us being subjected to this ruler, right? God, the creator of everything, um, Jesus is... Uh, <clears throat> Um, God's Son and all authority has been given to Jesus. And what does that require of us? That requires worship. He is the King. We are to worship the, 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 the true King. And as you see through... Um, as you see through the, the, the temptations of Israel, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the temptations of Jesus, right? He was tempted in all the same ways. And yet he was without sin. At the end of it, he, he tells Satan, just, hey man, just leave me alone, right? I, I'm, the, I'm the king here, you're not. And so with that, 
uh, he calls for our worship and our devotion. And the last point I would like for us to say is, and I kind of hinted at it right now, but uh, we can come to Jesus because of all of this we just talked about, because he is uh, the Son of God, because he is without sin, because he... because uh, all authority has been given to him, we can come to Jesus with confidence. Right? What's the what's the big deal about Jesus being sinless? Hebrews 14, I'm sorry, 4, 14 through 16 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest uh, who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us, home, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to em, em, uh, empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Listen to this. Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. As we talked about earlier, church, we want to be our own saviors, and we have failed many times. And so sometimes we start to look outside. Maybe we've been hurt by other people. Maybe other people have fallen short of our expectations. Or maybe it's a, a family member. Maybe it was a loved one. Maybe someone who you, you, you realize, man, I can't do this. I, I need to start following someone else. And those people have fallen short as well. And, and Jesus says, come to me with confidence. Come to me with confidence. The question we all must face is who is Jesus? <clears throat> when we hear this story, are we thankful that Jesus is here or do we push away with all of our might? In Matthew twelve thirty, Jesus says, whoever is not with me is against me. You know, in this passage that we read this morning, uh, <clears throat> in this passage that we read this morning, we look at Satan and we think, okay, well, that's Satan. Of course, he is tempting God. Of course, he's questioning God's, uh, uh, who Jesus is. But, but it's interesting that that's the first, that's the first questioning in the book of Matthew, it, it's by Satan. Now, if you read through the rest of, and, and so before we go on, uh, but because it's Satan, it forces us to either choose, hey, are we like Satan or are we not like Satan, right? And you may think that's a little bit harsh, uh, but, but if you look at the rest of the, the questionings throughout uh, the story uh, of Jesus as they're questioning who he is, uh, it becomes, it's not Satan anymore, but it's the religious leaders. And to be honest, church, it is all of us. We have all questioned who Jesus is. We have all questioned if we should submit our lives to him or if we should pull away. Jesus says, whoever is not with me is against me. Is Jesus the authority in your life? Is he the king of your life? Is he the ruler? Do you run to him with confidence? If he isn't, I want to urge you to, let, to, to, to allow Jesus or to let Jesus uh, <clears throat> be Lord of your life. Stop pushing against him. In this passage, and in, 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 in as, as, as down as it may sound, the, the real sweet part of this passage 
is there are many people throughout the book of Matthew who question who Jesus is. And Jesus doesn't tell us quickly to get behind him. Right? He doesn't tell us quickly to leave him alone. <clears throat> he does not punishment, punish us quickly as our sins deserve. On G, on, when Jesus was on the cross, at the end of the, the book of Matthew, when Jesus was on the cross, there was people at his, uh, there, was, there was officers at his crucifixion, and they were looking at Jesus, and they were saying, is this the Son of God? Is this the question that we just read, the question that we read this morning, is this the Son of God? Is this who everybody has said he is? And, and Jesus didn't send that man away. Jesus didn't crush that man right there. Right? Jesus, um, <clears throat> uh, shortly after he asked that question, that same person said, surely that is the Son of God. And he became a believer. <clears throat> so wherever you're at, you're questioning who Jesus is, I just want to encourage you to, to keep asking that question. Keep pursuing the Lord. And I pray that the Lord just calls you to himself. I pray that he draws you in. Those of us who are uh, followers of Christ, I would just encourage you to, to, to continue to come to him with confidence. Continue to come to him knowing that he is the way. And we, 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 are, we, we are broken. We are wrong. We don't do it right. But Jesus, Jesus does. Let's run to him with confidence. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, thank you for coming to do the things that we cannot do, Lord. We could not do. As, as creatures, as image bearers of who you, uh, of you, Lord, as, as, as created beings who have been made by you, Lord, uh, to, 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 to <clears throat> reflect your image, Lord, we have failed at that. We have done that wrong over and over and over again. But we thank you that you have done it right, Lord. Lord, I pray that we run to you. I pray that we acknowledge you as uh, the, the, the true Jesus, the true Son of God. I pray that we just let you take over uh, our lives, Lord. In Christ's name, amen.